Hey you, here's some news. 38 million pieces of trash were found washed up on an uninhabited island in the Pacific. We did it! Arrested Development has been officially renewed for season five, which means it's officially almost half as good as Bones. 12 seasons. Betsy DeVos plans to kill the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, which forgives student loans to people who, among other public services, become public school teachers. In case you're unaware, DeVos is the Secretary of Education. That's like the Secretary of Education making life harder for teachers and students. How did she get that job? Trump, uh... Donald Trump nominated her? Yeah. How, the president is supposed to nominate that person. He's, He's what? Chris Cornell has died. He was the front man for Soundgarden and Audio Slave. We're obviously not gonna do any jokes about this. It would be in poor taste. So we'll just talk about Roger Ailes instead, who also died. The former Fox News CEO had a bit of a fall from grace recently on account of a decades long history of severe sexual harassment and enabling of other severe sexual harassment. But I do wanna be fair and balanced. You know, in times like these, it's important to separate the man who forced employees to suck his from his art, which worked tirelessly to divide the nation and destroy public discourse. In lieu of flowers, f this guy. Ailes is survived by ghouls and demons. And uh, I'm just getting word, if you thought that was mean and unhelpful and in really poor taste and doesn't contribute to civil discussion, send your thanks to Roger Ailes, deceased. And then suck his if you want to keep your job. In other news, in a seemingly non-stop barrage of stories and golfing, the president found time to tweet the word we, and only the word we, eventually deleting it. And I know it's not important, and I don't wanna goof on the old president too much, and there are other things going on, but what was this tweet gonna say? Is he saving it? Like later will he tweet like, we must fight everybody but me, or, was it not even supposed to be the word we? Because the following day he tweeted, wishing Flotus Melania and all of the great mothers out there a wonderful day ahead with family and friends, happy Mother's Day. According to the LA Times, he tweeted this, obviously from a golf course in Virginia, while his wife celebrated Mother's Day with her family in New York, which is nearby and easy to get to for the president. But maybe he was trying to schedule that tweet. You know, typed W-I, autocorrected it to we, and then hit enter immediately, like a very smart man. The only other explanation I can think of is that he was originally going to tweet, we wish you a merry Flotus, which would have been amazing and I would have forgiven him for everything he's ever said and ever done. But he didn't. I rescind my offer for all future Mother's Days. Since then, no tweet starting with we. Perhaps we'll never know what this was gonna be. Perhaps one day we won't want to know because he'll just do something kind of similar like a day later and tweet, I have been asking Director Comey and others from the beginning of my administration to find the leakers in the intelligence community. Dot, 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 dot. And this was days ago. And that's it. There was no conclusion. The five dots indicate a follow-up. Sometimes it takes him a while to craft the second part of the sentence he didn't think of ahead of time, but he always finishes it. And not only has it been five days, it's been more than a day and there is still no end to this sentence. So please just finish your sentence, Mr. President. And if you're not gonna finish it, you're not saying anything. You're just telling everybody a thing that frustrates you. I like my leaders like I like my coffee. Complaining about and blaming others. Leave us alone, get your house in order, sir. And now for a segment we like to call, hey, it's not all bad. Some of it is very, very bad. Sheriff David Clark has claimed that he's taking a top job at the Department of Homeland Security. Clark is notorious for oh, calling for the suspension of habeas corpus in the United States, running a jail accused of abusing inmates, including letting one die of dehydration and shackling a pregnant woman while she was in labor, parentheses, the baby died, threatening citizens who disagree with him politically, boilerplate maniac stuff, criticizing Beyonce. He's been quoted as saying, there is no police brutality in America. We ended that back in the 60s. When we asked America for comment, it leaked footage of a police officer in Bulk Springs, Texas, tasing a handcuffed black man. The officer, James Young, was the field training officer for Officer Roy Oliver, who recently shot and killed African-American 15-year-old Jordan Edwards while he was in the back seat of a car, fleeing a fun party. And this just in, some footage of a Vegas police officer tasing an unarmed black man seven times and putting him in an unauthorized chokehold. Anyway, congratulations on your new position at the Department of Homeland Security. Please don't hurt people. This has been It's Not All Bad, Some of It Is Very, Very Bad.
A transcript has been leaked in which Republican Representative Kevin McCarthy commented to House Speaker Paul Ryan and other GOP members that then-presidential candidate Donald Trump was likely getting paid by Vladimir Putin. When asked about this, those involved said it never happened. When told that it was on tape, they said it did happen and that it was simply a joke. Which brings us to another installment of, is this a joke? Is this a joke? At the time of the recording, the Russia-Trump collusion conspiracy wasn't a thing. There were a few random articles here and there about how Donald Trump has some connections to Russia. For example, according to his two elder sons, they get a lot or most of their money from Russia. But there was no hysteria that Donald Trump was a puppet of Vladimir Putin. Not yet. So what's the joke? McCarthy says, swear to God, and then they said, this is off the record, no leaks, and what's said in the family stays in the family, like a bunch of actual criminals. Also, eerily similar to how Mitch Hedberg would end all of his stand-up sets with, don't you tell anyone about my jokes. Also, President Trump claims that when President Obama warned him about Michael Flynn, he thought it was a joke. Republicans in the White House claim that Trump asking Comey to drop the case on Flynn was also a joke. So is everyone just hilarious? Could you maybe not joke around about that stuff? Perhaps more alarming than the joke that's dominating the news is what Paul Ryan says before about Vladimir Putin's influence on Ukraine and other parts of the world. Quote, what Russia is doing, financing populists, financing people and governments to undo governments, you know, messing with oil and gas energy, all the things Russia does to basically blow up a country. At a press conference when asked if he still has complete confidence in the president, Ryan paused for nine years and managed to squimper out an I do. Let's watch. Mr. Speaker, do you still have full confidence in the president? I do. The saddest coward. Look at him. He knows how funny it is. I do. In other congressional news, Chuck Schumer's cigar exploded again. In the executive branch, in order to stave off suspicion that the president has any sort of unsavory relationship with Russia, the president fired the FBI director who was in the middle of investigating him for that. Then first thing the next morning had a private meeting with the Russian ambassador and foreign minister and a Russian photographer who took photos of them all laughing together. In that meeting, the president leaked classified information to, you know, our Russian adversaries. And if you disagree with that characterization, I've got a Paul Ryan behind closed doors who can't wait to talk to you. The leaked information was apparently so top secret, it's in the category above top secret. Trump first claimed he didn't do this, then he claimed he did, but it's okay because he's the president, which is true. He is the president. And he can declassify classified, or in this case, the most classified information if he wants to. There is usually a process of assessment with experts beforehand, but hey, there's no satisfying end to this sentence. The president claims that he shared this information for humanitarian reasons, but according to the president's old vlog that's been removed from YouTube, and I sure hope someone saved it, he doesn't actually know what humanitarian means. Because in 2011, he suggested going into Libya on a humanitarian basis, but then as payment, we'd take some of their oil. Oh, we did save it. We should do on a humanitarian basis, immediately go into Libya, knock this guy out very quickly, very surgically, very effectively, and save the lives. After it's all done, we go to the protesters who end up running the country. They're going to like us a lot better than they will if we don't do it. More importantly, we're going to save lives. And we should then say, by the way, from all of your oil, we want reimbursement. We should have said, we'll help you, but we want 50% of your oil. They would have absolutely said, okay, 100%. In fact, they would have said, how about 75%? Humanitarian in chief. In response to everyone's suspicions of his suspicious behavior, the president said in a press conference that there was no collusion between Russia and his campaign, but he only speaks for himself. And breaking news, just now the New York Times has released a transcript of the president's meeting with the Russians in which he said, quote, I just fired the head of the FBI. He was crazy, you know, a real nut job. I, 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 I faced great pressure because of Russia. That's taken off. In other words, the Russia investigation sleeps with the fishes. There's just too much news, constantly. Stories change. Is Comey good or bad? Is Russia-linked WikiLeaks good or bad? It's overwhelming. During the week, Vladimir Putin said that America was experiencing political schizophrenia. He was specifically referring to the president meeting with the Russian ambassador and foreign minister 12 hours after firing the FBI director, who was in the middle of investigating his campaign for possible collusion with Russia. Funny thing though, Trump met with them because Putin asked him to. And Mr. President, just be like, no nah, buddy, not today, I think that might look bad. Or, not today, maybe it would definitely look really, really bad. 
You're supposed to be tough, Mr. President. Say no to a meeting. But also, Putin engages in something called nonlinear warfare with his longtime advisor, Vladislav Surkov. Its purpose is to undermine people's perception of the world so they don't know what's fake or real. Funding organizations on opposing sides, things like that. Even online, there are bots that push fake stories, trolls that don't say what they mean, but maybe they mean it, and real people all mixed up. So there's no way to ever know what's really going on. When Putin smirks and says we're experiencing political schizophrenia, he's gloating about how f***ing with everybody is working. And when the president praises him, that's alarming. And when Paul Ryan talks about what Russia is doing, financing populists, financing people in governments to undo governments, you know, messing with oil and gas energy, all the things Russia does to basically blow up a country. Actually, we've run out of time. Mr. Ryan, really quick, follow up. Do you have full confidence in the president? I do. Neat. Thanks for watching until the end. This has been news, but only some of it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video. If you wanna to subscribe to our channel, hit the big C in the middle. And if you wanna watch more videos, hit the two boxes on the right. For notifications on when we have new videos go up, hit the little bell icon, and that's all the information you need. Welcome to YouTube.